In his 1997 book, The Power of Fastenal People, Bob Curlin laid out 10 basic rules of leadership that reflected our decentralized culture and helped fuel our success as an organization. We decided to sit down with BK himself to reconnect with these principles and explore what it means to be a great leader in today's business environment. Your book has been so influential in so many careers, both inside and outside our organization. What was your purpose of writing the book, and are you in any way surprised by the impact it's had? To be honest, the reason for writing the book was getting older, and I had been giving a lot of talks about the ideas that are in the book, and I got to thinking that at some point I'm not going to be giving these talks anymore, so why not have a printed a version of some of the concepts that worked at Fastenal. I think the impact is really from the ideas, not from the book. The, the fact that what we started with at Fastenal, with our concept of, of individual uh, responsibility and, and, and uh, delegation of authority, that those were experimental things that worked. And uh, the impact is to see the, the success of it, and then trying to transfer that to other organizations. Sure. And, and you know, when you look back and you, and you think about it and reflect, you know, what kind of originally inspired those ideas? And, and was, it, was it from leaders in your own life, observations, or what kind of brought that about? I, I would say there was more just uh, a collection of observations over my youth and, and uh, educational periods when I was learning things. You know, I, I wasn't uh, very good at athletics or artistry or anything like that, but I was a pretty good observer and quite analytical about what I was seeing. And to see how my attitudes about how people performed changed as I saw more people performing above my expectations. And I, I just opened myself up to to seeing the potential in people and how and started to think, how, how can you bring that out? And, and the result is some of the things that you see at Fastenal. And, and you wrote, you know, 10 kind of of your top 10 rules um, of leadership, and that's very unique. Um, when you think about that, they're all based on an underlying philosophy. And, and what would you say is kind of at the heart of those 10 rules? I, th I think the best way I could capture that is by mentioning an event that caught me off surprise, or off guard, and that was when uh, I was president of Fastenal, and I would get these phone interviews for articles that were going to be published in magazines, and usually it was I was one of ten CEOs that were being interviewed in a particular industry about their industry, and they're checking to see how we saw the market and the economy going. But in, in all of those things, they, they always wanted to have a trick question that would capture something unique about you, the individual. And in this particular interview, the trick question at the end was, what is your motto? And I quickly was taken back because I realized they didn't have one. And so I thought of what are the real absolutes in my life that if I had to fall back on something to make a quick decision, what would they be? And I said, my motto is believe in people and in free markets. You know, and I think that kind of sets the idea for those 10 concepts of what, what you should do with people. Believe in them, and, and they all relate to that. Sure. Nothing like a reporter bringing that out in you, right? <laughs> um, I wanted to, to touch real quickly on some of these principles a little bit more specifically. And, and when you, I'm going to give you a principle and just kind of want you to think about kind of what that first thing that comes to mind would be as we go through them. And so, uh, um, and I know you know these very well, but so the first one, uh, challenge versus control. I believe when, when I was taking my first management course in school, uh, they taught us to control. That was one of the things that a manager did. They didn't say anything about challenging. Uh, to me, when you control people, you're limiting their potential. 
you're telling them how you did something and you want them to copy you. If you challenge them, what you're really doing is telling them what output you want, what the results of the activity will be, and then challenge them to find the best way to get to that. And my experience at Fastenal has always been that when we challenge our people, they always outperform. And that's great. 100%. Um, number two, uh, treat everyone as your equal. For me, it means that you start to see that everything is done by teams. You don't do anything yourself. You have to have other people working with you. And the best way to get them working with you is to treat them as an equal. Because as we know at Fast and All, you can be the best salesperson, but if the product isn't packed right, or if it isn't delivered on time, billed correctly, you've got a problem. So you're all part of the team, and we're all equal in, in delivering to that customer the service we're expected to give. Right. Um, I kind of have, have to have a little fun with number three because we asked you to kind of come and be in the spotlight and talk to us today in the conversation, but number three, stay out of the spotlight. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's very dangerous for, for a leader to, to take the credit for everything that is accomplished by the team. You know, and that's oftentimes what the media is looking for. They always show the picture of the leader of the organization accepting an award or something. Uh, I, I think it, you'll notice in some of the old photos in the Fastenal Museum that most of the time when I was photographed for an article, there are other Fastenal people with me. I always insisted on that, because I said it wasn't my accomplishment, it was these people. And, and now that you say that, I think of a, going in the hallways, we have several articles up yeah. around the facility, and uh, as I reflect on that, yeah, you're absolutely right. And many of them don't even have you in it. It's talking about the company, and it might be Dave Donahue, or Bob Strauss, or someone like that, so. I, I was always asked to do this crazy things like stand in a hopper of nuts you know, for a picture. I, I just refuse. With that athletic background, you know, you didn't want to fall down or trip on stuff, right? Yes. That balance may not be there. Um, uh, number four is, is share the rewards. That, that's something, too, that you see at, at Fastenal, that uh, not just the, the financial reward, where we try to compensate everybody for the success of the team, uh, and everybody shares in that but I also think it's very important in terms of the psychic award of every leader should, for every time they have to tell somebody they did something wrong, give them a pat on the back for doing something right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that type of, of uh, psychic reward that makes everybody feel that they're part of the team and accomplishing it all together. Going to the fifth one here, and, and uh, this one resonates really well with me, and because you don't hear about this a lot, especially, you know, those when you go to universities or colleges, you, you have all these classes on, you know, presentations and communication and all these different things. But in many times we skip over this one, but your fifth rule is listen rather than speak. Yes, I've always said that you can't learn anything when you're speaking. You, you only can learn if you're listening. And the biggest problem most of us have is we don't do a good job of listening. You know, if, particularly if we're on opposite sides of a question with somebody that we're talking to, uh, what, what you're usually doing when the other person is presenting their arguments to, to try to convince you to change your mind, you're just thinking about m more arguments to throw over the fence at them. You know, and, and it doesn't get you any place. When you, when you open yourself up to listening, you're gonna be surprised at how many times you're gonna admit, I should have thought of that. You know, that's something that I didn't ha have previous conception of, of that reality going on in the world. And you learn from it, so learn to listen. Sometimes you have to practice yes. those things, be conscious of it, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, number six, uh, see the unique humanness in, in, in all people. We're all different, you know, we come in different shapes and sizes and we have different talents and abilities. And once you start to appreciate that and then sense that we're all human, which is what makes us unique. We're different from our, our pets. You know, every human being is special. And when you start to see human beings as special, then you start to hopefully bring out the potential that each of them have when they join your team. Number seven is one where uh, I remember very, you hear different speakers over time, 
And I remember Will Overton coming into one of, uh, when I was a general manager, came into one of our manager meetings and spoke about this quite a bit. It was the first time I'd ever heard a leader speak about it, really. And, and so obviously your, your leadership of him rubbed off, but he talked about developing empathy and being empathetic towards what people may be going through and, and, and don't go in every day with blinders on, and, and, but you have to listen and understand them. But uh, can you talk about developing empathy? For me, empathy is, is seeing that everybody else it, is unique as a human, but they have different backgrounds and different situations that they go home to every night. And you make room for that. Uh, appreciate the, the fact that they are in a different environment. I, I always say that it's, it's giving everybody else their space, that when you're in the supermarket and if people leave their cart in the center of the aisle while they look for their soups, you know, they lack empathy. If they pull their cart over to the side, they have empathy. They're giving everybody else a chance to get around them. I hadn't thought about that piece before, yeah. so I think, it's, I think it's a better way for me to talk to my Sign kids. And signaling for your, your right and left hand turns. Right, right, absolutely. But I've, I've never thought of empathy in that context before, so appreciate that perspective. That'll help me, it'll help me in parenting a little bit with my kids, yeah. so I appreciate that. Um, number eight, um, you know, one I think all of us continually have to remind ourselves of, but suppress your ego. Yes, uh, it, when, when you, a team is successful, uh, it's oftentimes the leader that starts thinking, I did something right, I did something right, and doesn't appreciate the fact that it was done by everybody. And if, if the center of attention is on the leader, that's going to be a mistake because the rest of the people that are part of the team are not going to feel that they weren't treated fairly. And they should be treated fairly. They were all part of the accomplishment. And at, at Fastenal, I, I'm just amazed at, at what Fastenal people have accomplished. Uh, I, can, I, I just saw a recent story of another company that was around when we were going and, and getting started. And they were taking credit for how fast they had grown. Well, they were about one one hundredth of our size. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, I think to see what Fastenal has accomplished through, through uh, believing in its people is just tremendous. And, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 that's the greatest satisfaction I think I could have. Sure. Yep. And we've all had a lot of fun doing that. So yes. it's, been a good, uh, it's been a good trip for everybody. A lot more chapters to write, too. Yes. You know, I think this one should resonate with our leaders quite a bit. But one of the things that, you know, we're a very goal-oriented company. You know, we, we challenge ourselves. We challenge each other. We, we're very competitive. Um, and sometimes I think I see our leaders struggle with this a little bit, but letting people learn. Can you kind of give me your perspective on that? I, I always want to believe that people have a great deal of potential that is not being used. And sometimes the, the, the person themselves don't realize the potential they have. And, and you have to find ways of bringing that out. And one way to do that is by letting them learn. I, I think one of the great stories that I have in my life, when I was in a training program at IBM to be a, a manufacturing cost engineer, we had training in everything that was done at IBM to make a mechanical part. And they brought in their head heat treating expert. And he was talking to us. We were a group of eight graduate engineers. And somebody asked him where he had gone to college to get his degree in, in heat treating. He said, well, the only degree he had was a GED degree that he got under a tree in Korea when he was in the Army. Everything else had been learned <laughs> at a heat training facility such as IBM. And it just amazed us to see you know, that something that we thought was pretty technical was, a de was something you could learn. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to go to school necessarily right. to get it as long as you went after it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And just to expand a little bit you know, on that, and when I think about is we've really spent a lot of time in the last few years on productivity, becoming more productive in what we do. You know, um, can you, any advice to the folks at Fastenal within that, to, to the leaders and the folks that are really trying to accomplish a goal or to become more productive, the easy thing to do is like, hey, I can just get it done faster, so I'm just gonna do it myself. Any advice to those folks to kinda just let go a little bit and, and let those folks learn so that balancing that need for productivity and the, the achievement with 
letting people learn. How should we think about trying to balance that ourselves as a leader? Well, I, to, to me, productivity comes from coming up with ideas and then interchanging those ideas with other people that you know and trust that uh, will help you f uh, move those ideas along. And you have to have that open communication. You know, I, I see that at, at FASNA. That was one of the things we committed to earlier. I, I called it chaotic communications. Back in the pre-internet days, everybody had everybody else's phone number. You could call anybody. And now you can talk to, or you send an email to anybody at, at Fastenal. You know, and it's that openness. I, I, I have seen too many business organizations where you had to go through ladders, up one ladder, and then it came back down the other one. By, you know, everything got lost in the translation. You know, but to have people working together on ideas and coming up with them without having to have somebody check and say, okay, this is open, maybe keep moving on. You know, that, that's what, where productivity comes from. In, and another observation at Fastenal that I always saw in the early years was half of our procedures changed every year. You sure. know, that's where productivity comes from, uh, by w being willing to change. You, you have to have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we have it really deep into the Fastenal culture. Absolutely, thanks. Um, the final of, of the 10 rules is remember how little you know. You want to give us some thoughts behind that? No matter how smart you are, there's somebody else there's smarter than you are in the field that you think you're smart in. And your obligation, I think, should be to go out and try to find that person and learn from them. You know, that's part of the learning process to admit that you don't know everything. There's just so much going on in the world and so little time to learn it. But, you know, to the extent that you can, Remember how little you know, then encourage yourself to go out and learn. Out and seek that knowledge, right? And others have it. So, you know, we went through the top, your, your 10 rules. And do you think, you know, when you think about the principles behind them, do you think of them as having changed it all over the years? I don't think the principles have changed. One thing that I would advocate for change is they came out of Fastenal and observations of how these things worked at Fastenal. I would encourage everybody that's at Fastenal to go out of their organization and realize that the same ideas apply to the other organizations that they know and, and perhaps participate in and encourage it. You know, what we're seeing in the world, I think, is just the opposite direction of where leadership is going. It's going to a more control rather than challenge type of a situation. And uh, the principle I, I would say is it would be to try to get these ideas out there and, and encourage more people to practice them. Not be afraid to share what, what we've learned, right, over well, the years. You know, when, when you know something works, then, then why not advocate for it? We, we talk often about how as a supplier for, for Fastenal and as a partner with our customers, one of our goals is to help make their business better. You know, and if we can do that, then they'll give us more things, right? That's, that's a very good point, yes, to, to stress the fact with your potential customers and your existing customers that you know, these ideas work for us. We'd like to encourage you to, to explore them also. And uh, one of the things you've been very generous with over the years is when we brought customers to Winona, you know, um, signed books for them, met with them, said hi to them, and, and I think that has a lot of value to them, and I don't think we always think of it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, how we can talk culturally what's worked for us um, from a management philosophy, what's worked well for us, from a leadership philosophy, what's worked, because you don't hear about that as much outside of our four walls as you do within it. I, I have heard anecdotally that in the days when we used to bring potential customers to tour Winona facilities, and we would show them around, take them to the IT department, and the, they'd ask the IT department, uh, you know, what they could do in terms of reports generation, and the IT say, just tell us what you need, we'll do it. You know, it was that openness and that ability to, to modify everything that the customer needed. You, you, you wrote your, your book, you had the 10 principles, you know, and as you've continued to learn and you've continued to observe and you've continued to do things in the community and other areas, do you think about it all adding, a, if you added a supplement, would there be a, number, a rule number 11 
and a rule number 12? Or do you think that you have it, you have it nailed in those top 10? No, I would just say the, the, if there is a rule 11, it would be to go out and, and preach to the world <laughs> the first 10. Sure. Yeah. Spread it, speak it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid and, and use that to bring value to others. Yes. Absolutely. If you had to boil everything down and, and you think about fastno leadership and to all of the, the folks, and I always like to talk about anybody that works at Fastenal in one way, shape, or form is a leader. You might lead an account. You might lead the part-timers at the branch. You might lead national accounts or safety specialists. You might lead a district or region. When you, when you boil it all down, what's the fundamental purpose of leadership at Fastenal? There are two things that I've said in the book that are the two requirements to have a successful organization. And I think that they answer your question. The, the first one is that leaders have to make sure that everybody that joins the organization is pursuing a common goal. So whatever capacity you are at Fast and All, if you're interviewing somebody for a position in your department, you know, make sure that they know what the common goal is and that you feel that they will pursue that. And then the second thing that, that everybody should do is find ways to bring out and use the potential of that person joining the organization. If we continue to do those two things, we'll be successful. Great, awesome. And any final thoughts on, on leadership at all? My only thought would be at this point to say that how I am so grateful that I can see the success of Fastenal and some of the simple ideas that we had at the beginning on decentralization and the value of people. They all came to fruition and I feel with, the, I, I, as I said before, I'm amazed to see what Fastenal people are doing now and I have total confidence it'll continue for years to come. And Bob, really appreciate the time today. And on behalf of everybody, you know, on, on today's blue team and past and present, uh, thanks for your leadership and, and giving us a great organization to work within and, and challenge ourselves within and, and grow within. So, and thank you for staying involved and, and being willing to continue to share your thoughts. I have said that uh, one possibility for my gravestone will be I'd rather be at Fastenal. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Bob. Appreciate it.